What's up, Reefer Revolutionaries? It's 420 in California. This is Reefer Revolution Live. But I think in terms of marijuana, I think, and legalization, I think that should be a state issue, state by state. I think it's up to the states, yeah. I'm a states person. I think it should be up to the states, absolutely. You know, I know people that are very, very sick, and for whatever reason, the marijuana really helps them. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Terrorists keep terrorizing. Well, there's plenty of good people jumping in the chat smoking some marijuana right now, Beauregard. What are you doing these days? Don't really care. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, awesome stuff in cannabis news this week, along with your typical legislative bullshit. But we're going to focus on the good news, cannabis cures, and moving legislation, and all the good stuff. Welcome, everybody. This is Reefer Revolution Live. Yeah, leave us alone, man. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Broadcasting on BTV, the Cannabis Media Network. What's up, Reefer Revolutionaries? I'm Dave Cohn, and this is indeed Reefer Revolution Live. Welcome, everybody. This is the show where we spark up, talk about marijuana in the mainstream media, the politics of pot, and cannabis care coming from California, the great cannabis state of California. And when I say we, I mean, of course, my partner in all things cannabis as well as life, Coach Chella. Hi. Hi, yes, everybody. We are working on that. That's for sure. Hi, Hi, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the show. We got lots of folks jumping in the chat already. CJ Apo, Bonnie Lee. Yes, yes. Adelaide, Jake, MDN, Niles, happy guy. Brian, Brian Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Thanks, Brian. Laura P. Laura P. in the house. Welcome, everybody. Ellen Blasey. Old viewers, new viewers, spark up. What are we smoking? How'd you hear about the show? Where are you coming from? Where are you at? We're what out here smoking? in California, a legal cannabis state. This is a medical and recreational cannabis show originating from the great state of California, where mm. we follow all laws. Well, pertinent to cannabis. Yeah, all state laws pertinent to cannabis. Uh, but, uh, this is an educational show. We, uh, talk about news. We talk about, uh, we want to mainstream and normalize the use of cannabis as a medicine because when you recreate, you medicate. We're pretty normal. I mean, you know. We're, well, relatively kind of normal. Weird, I suppose. Weird normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Super laggy. I hope it's going out great. I'm hoping, I think it sounds okay, but the cameras are kind of laggy. But we're going to try to alleviate that because, folks, big news, big news. When we left you last, <laughs> when we left you last Sunday, uh, we uh, we were talking very much about the Emerald Cup. Yes. And uh, whether or not we, we should go, we probably should go. Lots of indications were that we should go to the Emerald Cup. And uh, lo and behold, on Monday morning, nine o'clock, uh, 9 a.m., <laughs> We received our media passes Yay! for the Emerald Cup. We're going in the Emerald Cup. We're cannabis media. <laughs> it's official. It's official. Whether they know it or not, we're cannabis media, we're and cannabis we're going to the Emerald media. Cup, and we are going to uh, we're going to do our uh, our Reefer Revolution Live style of coverage from both days up there at the Emerald Cup, yes. and we are going to attempt to do our show live. From on Sunday uh, at 4:20 from the cup itself, a version of the show, a version of the show, whatever it is, whatever we can pull off. But uh, yeah. we get to use the real bathrooms. We have some uh, good access as media. Yes. Uh, to and we are gonna we're gonna be covering most of the panels. That's really where are gonna be fo our focus. There's gonna be plenty of people covering the cultural end of it. And don't worry. And the booths. We'll be doing our dabs. Oh yeah, we'll we'll cover that too. We'll cover that too. We'll cover the whole thing. The whole milieu, uh, as it but were. But as you guys know, we do tend to focus on how cannabis, this life-saving, life-giving plant, 
uh, can help everybody. So obviously we're going to be focusing on those things That's right, at wanna... this incredible sun-grown organic cannabis festival, premier festival of California. Yeah, we're very we're uh, that was Monday. That was very exciting. Yeah, because uh, we had a great show, and then we got the news for that. So now we're just we're we're planning all the rockets for that around that. Uh, but lots of, you know, uh, Chella is talking about this new study about Alzheimer's and dementia and cannabis. And the author of that is go- uh, study is going to be at the Admiral Cup. So, so excited. It's all great. We're going to try to talk to, um, uh, I forget the chap's name, from the UK Cannabis Society. We'll try to talk oh, yes. with him. Uh, so there's lots of people on the list that we, and more and more every day. Uh, we're not, we're not, we, we literally had two three hour uh, educational streams going on here in the reefer revolution studio here at top <laughs> here at top mount washington in the hippie enclave in los angeles yes um uh, cello was on a zoom call with the society of cannabis clinicians yeah learning some amazing amazing information so good you guys listen if any of you are doctors or scientists or researchers or uh other folks working in the cannabis space um, and you're interested in joining the Society of Cannabis Clinicians, I highly recommend going to their website and filling out an application because they um, have such great doctors in their um, group who share information. And uh, the group started with a half a dozen uh, doctors sitting around a table swapping stories about what happens with their clients. And... It basically is the same thing now, just online and a lot bigger. And so quarterly, there's a Zoom call where everybody calls in, and um, it's pretty great. And then they have uh, a a huge um, wealth of resources available to folks. So I highly recommend them, Society of Cannabis Clinicians. Go on and check them out. Uh, There was, you know, and and I I kept uh, hearing in the background what was happening Tell would would blurt out these this amazing information about uh, of what they're, what they're learning on the ground using cannabis as medicine in mm-hmm. in opioid addiction and which was I think was that the focus of the call yeah in opioids and uh, pain management so which are of course related um, amazing amazing what was that one what was that one hot blurb that you... the best takeaway for me today was um, a single high dose of CBD, four to 600 milligrams, keeps cravings for heroin away for seven days. And that was a study out of uh, uh, Mount Sinai. Yeah, New York, Dr. Dr. Hurd, H-U-R-D. Incredible. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty amazing. It had sort of heard anecdotal stuff around that um, the future of medicine is cannabis, you guys. It sure looks like it. Uh, sure and if anybody, like uh, if anybody's suffering and and nobody has any answers for them, I don't know. And then I watched. I was on a three-hour uh, stream of the Hash Church. Oh, the Hash Church called. was amazing. Also, um, that one at least I got to re- see I a little that's bit what, of. I think that's what it was called. Oh, it's Bubble Man's the web. The YouTube site is Bubble Man's World. Um, which he was, he's, he's got a hundred thousand subscribers and he's found a way to monetize his damn channel, which is amazing. Uh, Anthony, just to respond to Anthony in the chat, we need help in the great state of Tennessee. The prohibition has got to be lifted. Ha ha. Guess what? Hash church. Yes. I what, Tennessee. it's on the way. We have news in Tennessee. Anthony Lawson. I think Can it's we? on the way. Well, the farm bill, oh. but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Well. It's all that's, related. That's all coming up. It's all coming up. In the headline hash, as well as our the rest of our first hour. Welcome, that's everybody. Right. This is Reefer Revolution Live. Subscribe, get notifications, ring that bell, thumbs that up, and <laughs> uh, spark up that whatever you're doing. Load hey. them, roll them, torch that, uh, torch you? that bowl, and let's uh, let's move on. Yes, dear. Be so kind as to pass me a lighter. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. There you go. You, you haven't once again. You have not sparked up at 4:20. That's okay. Uh, because we're so, we're so not... excited about what's going on. K-Hag, welcome. 49,000 opioid-related deaths in 2017. Yes, yes. indeed. And we are going to uh, help with that because Big Pharma's scared. <laughs> scared. Over-the-counter pain. We check. We've got that. work. We're working on that. That's happening. Um, heroin withdrawal. Check. Happening. Working with that. Um, it's happening. Uh, do you follow Dr. Ralph Mashalom? Yes. Oh, Hi, Mr. Yes. Sparkalot. We yes, sure do. Yes, we do. 
We uh, we, we, we know all about him. He's Dr. Meshalam. He's, we him he's, we love him. Love, 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 love Dr. Meshalam. We love all that he's done. Um, yeah. What can I say? Absolutely. I could Big go advocate. on and on about Dr. Meshalam. Big advocate about, of, of, uh, Dr. Meshalam. Uh, Kay Hag, I want to thank you. Our politics of pot, uh, segment yes. is inspired by your question this week on the YouTube channel about, uh, the Alexis Bortel federal lawsuit which there's news this week we're going to talk about. Uh, welcome. So welcome, everybody. Anthony Lawson is in there. Jennifer Schaefer's back today. Mr. Sparkalot, as I said. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining the show. Uh, share this broadcast. We're going to be here for a couple hours uh, as we uh, talk about this week's cannabis news. And as always, there is lots of cannabis news, uh, not the least of which is that we will be over at the Emerald Cup. Live on and in December. person. Unfortunately, we won't be in New York. Uh, but we will be uh, covering a cannabis, big cannabis event here in California at the Emerald Cup, uh, December 12th. No, I'm sorry, 15th and 16th. Yeah, 12th no, the, is another, the sorry, 12th is federal that week. cannabis lawsuit right, is, the 12th. is December 12th. Uh, 15th and 16th is the Emerald Cup. We'll yes. make sure we won't miss it. No. <laughs> uh, but we will be covering that uh, as well as going live, hopefully uh, on Sunday. And one of the ways that we are going to do that uh, is uh, our goal. We now have a goal on our Patreon. Well, we have a Patreon, in case you didn't know. We just started it. <laughs> uh, the link is above on the YouTube channel. So, uh, many oh, have yeah? asked. Many have asked how you can support our endeavor. <laughs> uh, and we hesitate to ask because, well, first of all, we can't monetize on YouTube. Right. Uh, despite uh, many of, and, and YouTube is, uh, is dropping more cannabis channels again. So, um, so they say, uh, in, 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 lately. So, uh, we're on the edge with YouTube and, uh, Facebook, of course, is worse. And, uh, so there's no way for us to monetize this, uh, for our efforts. And we are, uh, the story is we are getting, we're, we're putting more effort into it and we love doing it and we want to do it. Uh, but there are stories to tell. There are stories to tell, uh, and there are that need to be more than the, the stories that are being told around the culture. The cultural stories are important. Um, you know, using the, using the plant, I think we think is important. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to talk about medicine and we need to talk about, um, you know, what's really going on underneath all this recreation and adult use tax and regulate schemes. So, um, we are going to, uh, increase our efforts and bring you more information and more coverage in this space as it grows here in California and beyond. Uh, so we are, we do have a goal for, uh, the, our Patreon, and that is to go ahead and get that, um, Sling the Studio. Sling Studio. The we Sling need a studio. Sling Studio to bring you cannabis stuff from all over the place. Exactly. Um, and, uh, we're going to, uh, hopefully have it in time. Well, we are going to have it in time for the event. We're going to, uh, try to demo one, uh, but eventually we would like to purchase one for the channel so that we can do that it on a regular basis. Um, so if you are so inclined and do want to and are, and are able to support the channel and want to, uh, click on the Patreon link above and you can contribute and we're going to come up with some kind of a, uh, a tiered structure for, it's like, oh, maybe we're going to, we'll, Dave and Chella take you down to the York, uh, the York, York, zone. York zone for vegan tacos. Yeah. You can have regular tacos. Uh, you if don't you're have in to LA. Have vegan ones. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but so, uh, so there you go. If you want to help us out, that'd be great. Uh, but if not, that's great too. Just you being here and sharing the show and telling people about the channel is more than enough, uh, more than we can ask for. So welcome everybody to the show. Uh, let's get into the headlines this week. No pressure on me today. We had like literally six hours of education f filtering in our brain. So I didn't write out a headline hash, but you can find out what I find to be important uh, in the cannabis news of the week uh, over at DC420LA.com. And sign up for a Cannabis Chronicle, which I send out on Saturdays, eh, close to 4.20, uh, as I can. And this week, uh, there were some interesting stories that I picked up across the cannabis media space. First of which, of course, Bernie Sanders is back in the game. We all know it. He's going to run. Uh, pretty sure. <laughs> my Bernie my Bernie radar says he's going to run uh, for, for what it's worth. But he uh, talks about marijuana prohibition in his new book. We know he's a uh, not a big fan of it, and he wants to change the laws. So nice to see Bernie uh, picking up the cannabis 2020 mantle, as uh, many of the Democrats, as we report here, have done and are doing. So thanks, Bernie, for always supporting uh, the end of prohibition. 
Uh, meanwhile, Rolling Stone reporting New Jersey. We, we, we watched it live here on um, Reefer Revolution Live. We broadcast the hearings uh, in New Jersey, which were quite interesting, the full uh, hours of them. Uh, but it looks like uh, they moved that by the end of the, our broadcast. They had moved it out of committee. And um, the long road, maybe not so long road, has begun in New Jersey that could be selling recreational weed in the medical dispensaries by January. So New Jersey could have its legal cannabis sooner than later. Uh, another big story this week. Uh, the U.S. tax court tells the cannabis industry, you're still drug traffickers in Leafly. The um, suit that was being watched, Harborside Health, many of you know Harborside Health, uh, looks like they might have to pay that tax bill after all. Of course, we're talking about IRS Rule 280E, uh, which the tax court uh, just said is still in effect and you have to pay your tax. So we're hoping that changes. Uh, that 280E rule is maybe the first thing to go uh, in this new Congress uh, with the conservatives help. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, that out of Leafly. Uh, speaking of conservatives, it's happening, folks. It's happening. It's official. Well, it's not official, official. But hemp is in the farm bill, and it looks like the farm bill is moving forward. It looks like a deal is struck, and it's going to happen and be voted on and be signed by the end of the year. And looks like McConnell's uh, Christmas present is going to be uh, for Kentucky is going to be industrial hemp uh, across all fifty states. And big ramifications. We're going to talk about that in the Green Rush segment uh, as we move forward into more political news. Pete Sessions going out diehard, diehard prohibitionist going out screaming blocks, continues to block in the lame duck session uh, of marijuana amendments going you know, to the last, to the last breath. They're going to block it as even more banks without those marijuana amendments going through. It does seem that more and more banks are picking up marijuana businesses. A new federal report from Marijuana Moment uh, reports on. Thank you, Tom Angel, and great reporting over there. Uh, he also reports on the new Michigan bill that's uh, going to help people with the convictions uh, or overturning their convictions and marijuana offenses. So that's good news coming out of Michigan after legalization. Um, but of course, the legislature can't leave things alone. And they're trying to stop the will of the people, as they're also doing in Utah. They're going to try to prohibit home grows in Michigan to the uh, outrage of the populace. And in Utah tomorrow, they're going to debate changes to their new law that passed prop two. So that's, uh, you know, legislators will be legislators. They like to F with people. They tried it in Oklahoma. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on that stuff. Meanwhile, in the grossest of science news up North, Federal, let's see, is this government intrusion? Literally, the federal government in Canada is up people's butt. They are testing your poop in Canada to find out how much cannabis you use. I just, um, you know, I don't even want to know the process, but here are the results. Montreal has the highest rate of consumption with roughly 1,922 grams a week. Toronto is number two huh. with 1,257 grams a week, followed by, by Vancouver and a pitiful 721 grams a week huh. of trace THC in your excrement, Vancouver. Huh. What's up, BC? Apparently not THC. <laughs> wow. They don't trust reporting. Voluntary reporting. Yeah. So they are testing to find out how much cannabis is being consumed in Canada. And this test will continue throughout 2019. And that's the headline hash from DC 420 LA. Uh, besides one thing, let me just pick this up because I did ask for folks to send us, send us articles. And this did one get sent to us by I mean, Holy Cannabis Oil sent this over. Uh, pretty sure. If I don't recall, because yeah. this joint is taking effect. Uh, from Ganjapanur, ancient virus created CBD and THC genome map reveals. And that is in Science Daily, uh, Science News Daily. Science Daily? Science Daily. Uh, how ancient viruses got cannabis high. So apparently, the, our, the body, the THC and CBD are 
viruses or created by viruses and a beneficial one? From the hemp plant. From the hemp plant. Interesting. It The, the virus mutated something in the hemp plant and made uh, CBD and THC happen. Uh, the way it does. So we'll, we'll get it. Well, we'll get into that in their science section. Oh, okay. If you want to talk, if you because uh, Shella has a toke from this uh, week's I week's uh, 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 what's it called? The Cannabis Chronicle. The Cannabis at Chronicle at DC420LA.com. That I enjoy this morning. Were you in a bath? I was not in a bath. No. We're gonna try to get a bath up in uh, <clears throat> at the Emerald Cup. That'd be nice or to get a, a bath. Jacuzzi. I'd like a jacuzzi. That'd Anybody really know nice. a place up there we could uh, we could crash That'd near Sonoma? Nice. That'd be nice. Anyway, there's lots of places. What's your but toke? Anyway, so my toke, uh, the salon article. Would you mind bringing that up? Absolutely. So the salon article uh, addresses um, well, big marijuana. Uh, it's big marijuana versus craft weed. Well, cannabis. Conglomerates ruin small family farms. So we've been going to a lot of panels and um, events and discussions and talking with a lot of farmers and hearing what a lot of farmers have to say about this very thing, in addition to the article from Salon. So um, in the article, it basically... Um, it basically summarizes the idea of the big marijuana prophecy where, of course, oh, Monsanto is going to take over Philip Morris or you name the big uh, culprit, um, which I think is entirely possible, you know, like, like McDonald's, you know, uh, but farmer's markets still exist and there's lots of people who prefer organic food. Um, so I think that's the direction uh, that the story pretty much talks about. Um, but as an adjunct to that, synthesizing all the different things, um, it's important as consumers who are buying from dispensaries, even sometimes, that you talk about local craft-grown um, small batch, family farms, generation farmers. Make sure you talk about that stuff when you go into dispensaries. It's really important as consumers to do that. Um, because then the dispensary will be more inclined to support their local farmers and their generation and their craft farmers that brought us this industry all in all. As I'm sure all of you are in your localities, the local generation farmers of your own um, region. So um, I love that uh, Salon is talking about these things. I'm really glad that it's becoming part of the conversation. Um, well, we have a governor now in California. Yes, the governor elect. That seems to be uh, friendly to craft cannabis and understands the struggle. Uh, you know, to keep it alive, as a, as you've reported, and uh, he's also um, we know that the based on what the uh, one of the panels that I was listening to today had the uh, the uh, I believe it was the author or at least he was uh, instrumental in in moving the compassionate care bill through California legislation uh, that passed and got vetoed by Jerry Brown. Uh, they're going to bring that back up again uh, for Gavin Newsom because of, and he'll sign that. But he has expressed support for the craft cannabis, and that's really that's. There are fifty thousand growers in California, and seventeen hundred licenses issued. That's probably changed, but that's that's pretty much the ratio. Uh, not a big, you know, not they're not churning out the licenses, and many people aren't looking for licenses. Um, there are several growers in California that are and distributors that are trying to hooey up and form co-ops or <clears throat> uh, keep keep smaller growers together. But if this has been apparently this has been an issue even before the advent of tax and regulate and this whole structure, um, you know, it's the small growers always always you know needed support, uh, and now it just has to be organized and official and and uh, uh, part of the conversation part of the because the bulldozers happening you know corporate cannabis is here uh the rich white politicians have figured out how to make money on both ends making making cash and 
you know, out of uh, in, in giant cannabis corporations in a quasi legal uh, manner and also still locking up more people uh, across the country, according to FBI statistics for marijuana. Uh, so they're making m money on the Prohibition 2.0 as well as corporate cannabis. Uh, so it's happening. Um, with the Farm Bill, you know, it's happening. So we have to be vigilant and keep our politicians like Gavin Newsom in California, the fifth largest economy in the world and the largest cannabis economy outside of Canada, if not bigger than Canada. Probably it is bigger than Canada. Um, you know, uh, we have to stay on top of it. So good toke, Chella. I agree with you completely. Uh, on uh, and it is good that Salon picked it up. Yeah. Um, so small tubes. Hey, I've been seeing you all over the chat. Welcome everybody. Uh, yes, Mr. Sparks a lot says, I think Big Canna. I don't think Big Canna will hurt niche growers, just like beer companies. There are general ones and your craft beers as well. Sure. It, you know, of course, a lot of your craft beers get bought up by your corporate. Yes. Big Canna. This the uh, Big Canna myth um, prophecy. Uh, assumes that cannabis is a commodity. And as Hezekiah Allen was saying and reminded us, cannabis is not a commodity. It's not interchangeable. And we were hearing on some of the other panels this morning, you know, it's e even with as controlled an environment as possible, it's still really hard to get the exact same properties from batch to batch to batch. So... To, us, to assume that Big Canna could take over assumes that cannabis is a commodity, and cannabis is not a commodity. Well, they're trying, uh, as you'll hear in one of these, uh, one of our first, in our Green Rush, Rush Report, Green, our Green Rush, Green Rush Report, uh, Monsanto has its first genetically modified uh, cannabis plant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, and there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, uh, the exact word, but they're they're basically trying to grow strains with consistency. They're basically looking for consistent properties in, you know, the strains that they grow. And that's all being done through, you know, plant material and, you know, in the lab, essentially, and biobiology. You know, I don't know. Growers know more than I, but am I, am I wrong or am I right? There's a lot of, uh, we heard that basically there's a, you know, that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it so you get the same consistency all the time uh, in a plant, which is important. I mean, how you do that, but it's important in the pharmaceutical world. It sounds like it's not really possible. I, you know, this this is the this is the <clears throat> idea, I guess, behind isolates and taking it out of the the plant material out of the plant and then putting it back together in a way that you can control. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. So yeah, Monsanto OG. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Franken yeah. Franken cannabis. Yeah, I kind of went like I went like I didn't actually realize that it, it, this you know in touch cannabis show. I didn't realize that Monsanto had already done that. It was like what. <laughs> here it comes here it comes um so but you know it's the science of cannabis is more than just looking in your poop to see how much you smoke uh, i love that though <laughs> you have no expectation of privacy when you flush your poop down the poop it's true it's true they can don't. go through your trash they can go through your your uh your toilet a daily dope yeah <laughs> uh i'm gonna play uh uh, a little bit of the weed man later. He had he had he had probably the the, the best soundbite over out of that uh, New Jersey hearing, uh, and it it, uh, it reminded me of you, DD. Uh, but uh, Daily Dope doing some good coverage this week about uh, Michigan. Uh, a couple of great videos. So welcome to the show. Uh, subscribe to his channel. Make sure welcome everybody. Welcome to Reef Revolution Live. Uh, that was the headlines and Cello's toke as we move into our first block. Shall we, mm, Chell? Let's do it. Let's do it. Canada kind of um, world. Can let's go into the world. Let's talk about world. We go. We were talking about the poop of the Canadians, uh, and how much weed they smoke. I'm surprised it's Montreal. I would have thought it would have been BC. I seriously, well, well, I guess I don't know population, so it might have. I'm sure it has something to do with that. But uh, yeah, Montreal way up there in its usage uh, in their poop anyway. That's I guess, and that's hard to. I guess that. I guess that's hard to hard to uh, hard to cover up, right? Can't really. No, change you can't that. lie. Flush somebody else's poop. Poop don't, don't, don't lie, babe. <laughs> poop don't lie. <clears throat> uh, so that's part of that amazing science that's going on up there in Canada now that it's legalized. Canada does lead the world <laughs> in cannabis <laughs> research now. Apparently, in all respects. Yeah. Well, and uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Brazil uh, is making moves in uh, in cannabis legalization. Of course, 
it's been a struggle there. And as we move into that story, let's take a look at this news news story that was posted this week about uh, just that topic and a young lady who is struggling uh, for uh, the kind of medicine we know they need. Let's take a look. It is being called a miracle. This little girl named Ani has gone from 60 seizures a day to almost zero. Ani lives in Brazil, but new at 7 o'clock, 10 News anchor Robert Santos shows how her savior was in San Diego. In this Brazilian documentary, Katiel Fisher explains how her daughter Ani started having aggressive epileptic seizures when she was three. The family never lost hope despite the sadness. Exatamente essa esperança. That hope led her to this Facebook page cre created by a Dallas mother whose little girl also suffered from debilitating seizures. It was very hard. Penny Howard became a source of strength for the Fishers because she and her husband discovered a cannabis-based product that worked wonders for their daughter. It was a big deal because now we had our kid. We had our daughter. The challenge for the Fishers was in Brazil, any product made of cannabis was illegal. Desperate, they illegally imported it. Brazilian Customs discovered a shipment and that led to a court case. The Fishers testified that product kept Ani alive, decreasing her seizures from 60 times a day to almost zero. The Brazilian government ruled it would be inhumane to keep it from little Ani. The Fishers set a precedent by changing the law. This is the product that families are calling a miracle cure. It's called Real Scientific Hemp Oil, and the company that makes it is right here in San Diego. The level of THC is very, very minimal. Dr. Stuart Titus runs Medical Marijuana Inc., the first to work exclusively with Brazil, which will pay them for the product. Brazil's landmark decision opens up a multi-million dollar hemp oil pipeline from San Diego. San Diego is really becoming a major center for the development of these wonderful CBD-based products. Robert Santos, 10 News. Dr. Titus says Brazil has agreed to pay for the hemp oil product for about a thousand patients. The Fishers and the Howards plan to meet for the first time in a few months here in Southern California. Uh, the Brazilian government's <laughs> going to bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> Just what? like the American, gov the American government go is allowing allowing uh, uh, Canadians to bring it into California for a test. Huh. But they're the Brazilian government. Now, uh, that, that story was uploaded this, this week by uh, uh, someone, not the station. Uh, so I'm not sure how old that story is. It's relatively new. Uh, and it, it, Brazil oh, yeah. is in the news this week uh, with its changing marijuana laws. Brazilian because law, of Ani. Because of a petition, obviously because of Ani. Yes. Uh, and it's and her story. Um, the lawmakers basically are making moves. And uh, a key Senate committee has approved a bill to allow the use, cultivation of marijuana for medical purposes. A uh, measure will, which was brought up in response to an online citizen-led petition that received about 119,000 votes would remove criminal penalties for growing, possessing, and consuming cannabis for patients who receive prescriptions from their doctors. That at uh, Kyle Yeager were writing over at Marijuana Moment about Brazil. So um, there you go. Another government making moves, as well as who else, Jella? All of a week? sudden, they turn around just after a what, month what? ago. They what, said, what, 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 what? oh, if you, South Korea, if South Koreans go traveling, you can't use cannabis on your holiday but now oh it's okay well not if you need really. it for medicine not really <clears throat> well it's a similar to the texas law about cbd it's a cbd only but really for big pharma they only will do the pharmaceutically based cbd but you know what dudes it's a nose in the tent so I'll take it. Laura P. in Alabama. Even Alabama knows this. Carly's Law. They have a law in Alabama. Is that the law for CBD? Nice. Uh, good info. Thanks. Thanks, Laura P. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. I love having people from different areas. Yeah, so we can keep up on their laws and what's going on. Because we, it, we are spoiled here in California, I must say. Yeah. Uh, and we are often in the news when we find out how freaking like, horrific it is around the state in the country in some of these states like Alabama uh, for people in possession even today. Because you know what? Arrests are up as well as profits. So they really are, you know, they have a win-win. These rich white 1% uh, 
what it, uh, I think the weed man calls it the Caucasian cannabis caucus. Um, <laughs> you know, to Ching making money. We're going to watch some of his video, but, uh, yeah, South Korea, there you go. Proposed medical marijuana law. Uh, but big farmer friendly. So we got similar, you know, it's nose in the tent. Is that what you're calling it? I'm you're calling, calling this a nose, nose in, the tent. in the tent. Officially in the nose in the tent category. Yeah. For South Malaysia Korea. and Thailand will be after. Thailand. Malaysia. Mm-hmm. How does that work when you go to, when you get, uh, hi, Bonnie Lee. Uh, how does that work when you get the death penalty for cannabis use? Well, that was the, that's what prompted them to start talking about it and thinking about it. Is I get you epilepsy and the oil and it's you know i'm just glad that everybody's talking about it yep i'm glad that these changes are happening even so if it's slow m- movement of course we've seen movement in mexico recently M- mexico is going to be the uh if we don't if we don't get on our get on it in ca- in america in, Cal- in california the here california we're ready so we got to change it federally but as we don't get on it mexico is going to be the cannabis resort destination uh, of the world shortly because they're about to legal it, legalize it recreationally, and people are look at Oscar. People are going to be uh, going on more vacations to uh, to Mexico in the near future for that reason. Uh, so uh, come on, U.S., let's do this thing. Don't let the don't let these countries beat us in uh, in the business and in social justice and in uh, freedom, liberté. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So uh, there you go. That's uh, that's the world stories this week. Cool. Uh, let's move into our next, uh, now K hag. I hate saying that K hag. Uh, that's, that's the name. That's the name. <laughs> uh, thanks for your, we, uh, you asked this week in the YouTube chat over here at uh, subscribe, get notifications here at, uh, DC for, uh, reefer revolution, DC 420 LA on YouTube, wherever you are, subscribe, get notifications. We're on Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, D live and we TV, the cannabis media network, whatever you do there, do it. So you can see our show again every Sunday. And whenever we do go live, as we start to talk about the federal cannabis lawsuit that uh, is uh, big news, it's time, the time is nigh uh, for the removal of cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act as a whole. Everything, not just hemp, which is happening, but we want it all. We want the whole plant taken off the Controlled Substances Act, and that's what this lawsuit is about Let's take a look at a, uh, a video from the channel here uh, at Reefer Revolution, a story from a few months ago about Alexis and a uh, friend of the show, Alexis Bortel, um, <laughs> and uh, and her story. So let's take a look at this. Um, I forget the news channel, but I put it up here on the, this channel. So it's from us. Here we go. On a farm outside Larkspur, Alexis Bortel stays busy helping others by growing vegetables for those in need and paving the way for other children who share in her pain. I usually black out. I don't remember them. Since the age of seven, this 12-year-old has suffered daily seizures until coming to Colorado and starting a doctor-recommended THC hemp oil regimen. It's a Schedule One drug. We hope to change that. Alexis, who consumes THC three times a day, says the oil treatment has made her seizures go away. She hasn't had one in three years. The THC really helped. But THC is different from the newly FDA-approved CBD. THC creates a high while CBD does not. For Alexis and others, we're told CBD does not help. So this family continues its fight to get THC okayed by the feds. They say they're encouraged by the recent progress. I think it's great baby steps. It's her great first step. The Bortel family suit now in the hands of an appeals court argues Alexis cannot travel across state lines with her medication and is not allowed to visit national parks and elsewhere. I can't even step in a post office because it's federal land. And oral arguments on the Bortel case are expected later this summer. We reached out to the DOJ named in this lawsuit. We have not heard back. Michael Konoposik, Fox 31. Well, the names have changed on the lawsuit now that uh, old Beauregard has been bounced. Uh, But here is Alexis's tweet this week. Uh, 13 more days. It's now, uh, it's on the 12th. So we're down to, uh, what are we... uh, uh, 10 more days, 10 days, 11 days, um, federal cannabis lawsuit. Will you be there? I hope lots of people go to the hearing. It's at second circuit court of appeals, December 12th, 10 AM 40 center street, Foley square, New York, New York. And, uh, so that's 
pretty cool. We'll post right. that in the chat. I mean, in the uh, in the notes for the show, right? We will. I can. And we'll po- and we will uh, publicize it all over and tell all of our friends in New York, all of our Bernie friends. Uh, we should publicize it amongst the um, Cynthia Nixon folks. The case, the official case, this is the website of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, and there it is, the calendar, December 12th, 10 a.m., room 1703, 17th floor. Uh, it's fourth up, Marvin Washington et al. versus Matthew G. Whitaker. Oh, Whitaker. The... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a, what's with these bald white guys? Right. Telling you. Uh, but uh, and hey, here's something exciting. Uh, well, we'll let's let's play this let's play this other video because uh, as it said, it said at all. Marvin Washington, of course, is the uh, former NFL player who is on the lawsuit, as well as Alexis and uh, a couple other folks, and one of them is a veteran. And uh, he was uh, recently in an AP story, so I'd like to play that. And uh, let's hear what uh, Mr. Balan has to say about why he is involved in this lawsuit. It was not Tulsa World. That was the AP. Uh, Belen. Um, you know, so, cannabis oh. has been the one. Sorry. So, uh, Jose Belen, veteran suffering from PTSD. Uh, is part of this lawsuit as well as uh, Alexis and um, the young man slips my, slips uh, slips my mind my memory my my eight things that I can remember. <laughs> uh, but uh, December twelfth, if you can show up, Daily Dope always going to try. But he got his uh, his tickets got screwed. But he is going to Colorado. That's very exciting, DD, uh, to interview medical refugees and invited to see the farm and the Haley uh, Haley Hope. Uh, Haley's Hope Crop. So that's so very great. exciting. We have, uh, we hope to go there at some point in our journeys to Colorado as well. We do make it to Colorado on numerous occasions. Wait, you're going in June? Maybe we can go in June too. You know, it's quite and possible. And connect. It's quite possible. That would be so much fun. Um, so, Or unless we're shooting a movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Because uh, that's exciting stuff this week too. Uh, but uh, so there you go. Two of the uh, Two of the folks that are part of this federal cannabis lawsuit with a hearing in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals that could literally change everything. Now, yeah. what's going to happen? Uh, this, you know, it, it's going to go end up at the Supreme Court. That's what's going to happen. Uh, this is going to probably get kicked out again, and then it's going to have to be refiled uh, to the Supreme Court. But this is one step closer to getting it to the Supremes. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that's a good discussion to have. But I really think that this uh, lawsuit is going. To uh, to the Supreme all Court. the way to the Supremes. So, oh, and here's the other news around what we'll do here on Reefer Revolution Live. So make sure you subscribe and get notifications. The good folks over at the United States Second Court of Appeals of the Circuit Court do not allow live cameras uh, in the courtroom, as you know, but uh, they do do a video, an audio archive. So I'm going to bring that to you uh, on the channel. Once it's, as soon as it's posted, I will keep an eye and I will grab the archive of the argument. Uh, the audio archive, the arguments. Um, Heller, I think, is uh, is arguing, um, and we will uh, we'll play it on the show. So subscribe, get notifications, and hit that thumbs up button uh, here for Reefer Revolution Live. We do this every Sunday at four twenty Pacific. The show where we spark up, talk about marijuana on the mainstream media, the politics of pot, and cannabis care. And we're going to move on to our next segment. Uh, any anything in the chat about uh, about the uh, about the uh, the, the lawsuit um or anything that's popping out in the chat um uh vegan metro is saying that uh the federal cannabis lawsuit would be something great to get before the justice dems or bernie himself that's a nice little idea um for all of us who support this lawsuit it'd be great maybe we could send a postcard to the court Ah, yes. A if sort we of can't be there in person. A brief amicus brief, if you will. On a colorful on a postcard. postcard from your community. Send a nice note to the judge uh, supporting um, Alexis Bortel. Uh, I stand with Alexis. Yeah, I stand with Alexis. It would be great. Wouldn't that be great? 
Uh, and if you are in the tri-state area or can make it to New York for the 12th, do show up at the court. Maybe wear green. I don't know. Um, be festive, but respectful. Um, and support Alexis at all um, at the Second Circuit Court on December 12th. We will all be there in spirit. All of our vibes are moving in that direction. And we are so thrilled and excited that this is all happening. So know that all of our energy is with you. Absolutely. And we will be reporting on that, uh, at least um, the outcome of the arguments. I don't know how long it's going to take them to make their decision. But um, we will con we can talk about the arguments and uh, report on that from the Emerald Cup on <gasps> Sunday the 16th when we do our live show as we are reporting from the Emerald Cup uh, in Sonoma County wine country. Oh, that'll be so um, nice. We're going to be up there as media folks. Reefer Revolution Live has gotten their media passes. We are going to the Emerald Cup and uh, have all access to uh, to the whole thing. And uh, we're going to be talking to some folks about the medicinal end of cannabis. Because yeah. when you recreate, you medicate. You do. Even Tommy Chong, who's going to be there, um, is, says that it's all medicine. That when you relax at the end of the day with the joint, you are medicating. When you're lifting your spirits, you are medicating. You True. are uh, you're medicating your soul, if nothing else. True so, story. So um, to you know, in this uh, in this world of strife, uh, you are uh, you are adding the adaptogen to your body. Well, yeah, they were saying the doctors were talking. The researcher and the doctors that I was listening to this morning, they were talking about that if you don't feel like you're. Um, getting better or relieved you're not going to be relieved even if physiologically you're relieved if you're still stressed out about it you're not going to feel relief right oh yeah so that's a very that's an excellent point um you know if the drugs you're being given are making you stressed and upset and sicker yeah and you're not enjoying it what's the point really it's not going to work you know so, so it's uh, a fascinating it's a really exciting time um i don't know uh, I know we stopped talking about that, but I'm going to call back to it. Call back to I'm it. I'm not sure that big cannabis is going to be that big a thing anytime soon, soon, because there are so many variables with this plant that is such a mystery. So I'm not sure that, um, oh, maybe they will. Maybe, you know, it'd be nice if people could give up tobacco for him. Well, you know, that, um, That'd be great. with hemp legalization, which we're going to talk about in the Green Rush, that's a distinct possibility. Maybe we should just talk about and, it now. And that might be uh, tobacco's <laughs> angle. Or no, well, let's get into the veterans. Oh! Because we just saw Jose Belan. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and why he wants cannabis in this lawsuit to be taken off the C uh, Controlled Substances Act. Yes. Um, meanwhile, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they've passed an awesome medical cannabis bill that the legislature tried to mess with. Uh, like they do. Like they do. Like they're doing right now in Michigan and in uh, Utah. Um, the, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they have started selling medical cannabis. Um, so let's take a look at why this veteran is doing what he's doing, uh, visiting the new dispensaries uh, choices in Oklahoma. This is from Tulsa World. Uh, so right now they said all you have is a sativa. Healthy Buds is the first marijuana dispensary in Tulsa known to be selling buds, which is the harvested plant ready to be smoked or used in recipes. Business in this East Tulsa strip center is brisk for owner Michael Monroe. Swamped, nonstop. He was surprised to see that most customers are older, in their 50s or 60s. There's a lot of guys that came in and they're like, you know, oh, I haven't smoked since the 70s. Michael Velasquez is a little different. He's a combat veteran who battles PTSD and anxiety. Yeah, yeah. So here's my medical card. You know, marijuana is truly the only thing that has helped me focus. He was out window shopping area dispensaries to see where he wants to buy from. It's good that we have some places to go than buying it off the street. You know, veterans have access to medicine and uh, r real medicine that's not going to have side effects like, you know, uh, Zoloft or Xanax. He says a lot of veterans have used marijuana all along. 
but it's nice now to not have to worry about breaking the law. The anxiety that comes with the, without having a medical card and trying to deal with your anxiety, it, it just clashes with each other. So even though you're taking medicine, you're not truly satisfying your anxiety because you're still worried about getting in trouble. All day long. So how much are you charging the ground? 25? 20. A pot could get 20 a gram. That's some high prices. That's not organ prices. For medicine. Yeah, and how long does a gram last you? <clears throat> um, but it's good to see that at least uh, at least veterans have a choice, and they have a way to access plant medicine now. Even though their Veterans Administration doctor won't tell them about it. They're kind of on their own. That's um, changing a little bit, but um, we will see. Still kind of on their own. Their doctors don't know anything about anything. Well, that's across the board. And with Some regards doctors to cannabis. take um, continuing education on the endocannabinoid system. And there are some doctors that are um, experts, like the ones at the Society of Cannabis Clinicians. Right. So if you're looking for a doctor who specializes in cannabis medicine, you can always go to the Society of Cannabis Clinicians website and search for one there. Indeed. And I also found that the uh, the uh, most people that are coming in are over 50. That's the majority of people are coming in. The story was about a veteran, but he had said the majority of the people coming in are in, in our age group, essentially. Not your, sorry, not your age group. Oh, yeah. My age group. I look great for 50. Uh, I look great for 65. I'm good. I mean, I'm 55, but I look great for 65. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, vegan, vegan Metro, Metro. six fifty a gram on the street. Yeah, right. But twenty a gram at dispensaries, plus tax on top of it. Right. But at our uh, at our local dispensary, who delivers up the hill? Um, they do have. Is it a quarter of small nugs for thirty? Yeah. Including no, tax. an eighth. An eighth. A quarter. Eighth is an eighth. Just an eighth. Smalls, thirty bucks. Happy guy. Which isn't bad. 320 of strawberry cough. Where are you, happy guy? That's a nice price. Happy guy. <laughs> um, but uh, don't sell any weed in our channel. Um, but, no, um, no but, weed yeah, no, that's, uh, show. that's, uh, it's just, a, just so we can keep the channel. That's all. Yeah. Um, the, uh, cause, uh, there, we have a story about people selling weed. Don't um, do that. the, uh, yeah, a five hundred like in New Jersey, five hundred dollar an ounce weed is gonna keep people on the street for three hundred and twenty dollar an ounce weed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's really indicative of what's going on in the tax and regulate uh, problem. They, you know, it's the idea of the whole tech. We make it legal, tax it, regulate it, so we can drive out the black market. Nice idea until it's three times the price of the black market. Plus tax. Plus tax. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, we have to find a happy medium on this, uh, idea. If you want your tax money and you want to stop the black market, it has to be basically decriminalized across the country and a lot of people allowed to grow their own give away very similar to what's going on in Mexico legislation. Um, that's not what's going on in Canada, Canada. They've got 40 new laws since it's become legal. <laughs> Prohibition two point uh, about about uh, making about how illegal actually it is. So uh, don't be don't be fooled uh, by legalization. It's not exactly what you think it is. Daily dope. Am I right? Am I wrong? Um, but uh, hey, you can get your mar your medical marijuana delivered in Michigan now, uh, despite uh, not being able to grow and grow your own weed. At least is what they're trying to do. We'll talk about that in our Midwest roundup. But let's get into the green rush a little bit, shall we? Let's as we move forward in the show. Um, and of course we talked about it in the headline hash. Mitch McConnell's getting his Christmas present. Hemp, Kentucky hemp is going to be able to be shipped all across the United States as soon as the farm bill is signed, which is apparently is going to be happening this week coming up. If not, you know, probably by the end of the year. And I love then... it. So this is a Hanukkah gift. Hemp. Hanukkah hemp. Yes. Hanukkah hemp. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. Oh, it is. So for Hanukkah, Mitch McConnell is getting hemp or giving hemp. Uh, so what giving exactly? Hemp to the 
What exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to talk about that, but let's see what uh, the money people think that means. The pot could get another political boost, despite all the trade talks and chaos going on in D.C. Congress has been putting the final touches on the Farm Bill, an agricultural piece of legislation that could go to vote in both houses, uh, both sides of the Congress next week. There's a provision in there that would legalize hemp. Now, hemp is uh, another variety of the cannabis plant commonly found in the form of uh, commonly found in hemp is an ingredient called CBD. It is used in products like body lotions, oils, edibles, uh, virtually no THC here. So it doesn't have those psychoactive effects like its marijuana counterpart. Hemp, by the way, also has industrial uses like fabrics, etc. And that's one of the reasons why they want to deschedule. Um, it also, by the way, CBD alleviates pain, depression, other health issues. So pot stocks might not be the only one sizzling if this bill is passed. That's according to our cannabis king, Tim Seymour, who's over at the plasma to break down who the big winners of the farm bill could be. Tim. So, yeah, it is, the whole hemp CBD story is one where, first of all, you get the opportunity for a massive growth part of this whole growth in the entire cannabis world, but you have a dynamic where hemp growth could be 500 percent over the next four years. National federal legalization puts some of these folks in a great position. First, just some of the core names that we know are already in this space and are known to be in the space. Charlotte's Web Trades in Canada, a company that's really been devoted to CBD. Uh, let's look at someone else here. Let's go Cureleaf. We've had them on our show. This is a company that has a big retail footprint. Look, bottom line is hemp allows the people who have a retail footprint to go everywhere right now with something that is federally legal. That's very good. It's, it's acreage. It's MedMen. Those folks that have that footprint, it will be very good for them. Now, let's talk about what hemp is also being used for. Look, Estee Lauder, this is a case of where wellness in the cosmetic space, they actually have a brand out there called Origins, which claims to have CBD in it. So you have the dynamic where the wellness, the cosmetics companies, the beauty, this is a big part of this trade. Now, let's get into another kind of obvious player when you think about farming and massive amounts of, of just dynamics here. Monsanto, who many people feel is kind of the, you know, the evil player in ag around the world today even out of this space they've actually discovered the first they have the first genetically modified cannabis plant that they've already come out with i think they're going to be in this um and let's go with walgreens and you know bottom line here is this is still going to be something in terms of otc you talked about it mel otc pain and sleep uh in terms of what hemp cbd will provide uh pain relief it's out there people will be rushing into places like walgreens they're not particularly p uh positioned but the bottom line is massive drug chains are going to see a lot of interest. Look, I've left a couple of these guys out. We know who Canopy Growth is. They're the biggest player in the entire industry. I've left Aurora. They're also one of the biggest. And both these guys actually say that they're going to be in hemp. I leave them out not because I don't think these companies will be, but some of these companies give you a different twist on people that are really going to benefit, whereas these are big integrated companies that actually I think are benefiting across the sector. BK has a question. Yeah, so I'm curious, Tim. On, on your chart there, you have some kind of consumer-facing, maybe just the lotion side, right, versus the medical side. Which of those is the bigger play? Which, what's the bigger market out here? Well, look, I, it, it's hard to know what's bigger in terms of pharma uh, and wellness and OTC. I would argue if you look at the world right now, OTC, pain, and sleep are two of the biggest uh, areas of of essentially over-the-counter drugs where people will be going into Walgreens. But someone like an Estee Lauder, again, if you think about the CBD component that's in creams, there's a bunch of different products out there right now in face masks. I know Guy would, would tend to exfoliate possibly with a, with a product like this. So, the, you know, we have this dynamic here where if you think about the crossover market that people don't even know how to value, because frankly, we don't know who's going to be jumping in here, but we assume it's a brand new big market. So it's an exciting time. All right. Thanks for that, Tim. Thank you. Thanks for that, Tim. Tim is a big cannabis guy. He runs a cannabis fund, actually. And he's a misogynist digger. Yeah. <laughs> and he makes fun of guys who exfoliate. Um, I should exfoliate more, actually. But uh, a couple of interesting things out of that little blurb. Monsanto has already released, what do they say? Introduced? Yeah, it's, they've already it's developed. genetically modified cannabis, uh, cannabis plant. <laughs> Is <laughs> that <laughs> the 7.0 from Alaska? It's the, yes, finally reached us. Coming down here? Um, yes, we're on earthquake, earthquake watch here in California. Uh, but there you go. There's a lot of players in this hemp field. Um, I'm hoping our little cannabis stock gets a, gets a bump from it when it happens. But... Uh, because it needs it, but um, it, there's going to be a lot of lot of players that are in this, and they didn't mention. I don't think they didn't even mention the tobacco companies really in that report. But tobacco, the big thing in Europe right now, big one of the big things with regards around cannabis, the plant, 
in all its forms is, um, of course, the T the cannabis light, uh, which is the low THC version of um, cannabis. And now, of course, we know that this version is being grown with very high medicinal properties, not just your industrial hemp garbage from China, China, um, but really good high medicinal valued plants with low THC. And those those values change in different, with different countries across Europe, but they're very popular. Uh, and we know people in America now are buying industrial hemp cigarettes uh, in shops in states where you can have low CB, you know, the high CBD uh, or industrial hemp. People are smoking it. Always used to really? heard, always used to heard that give you a headache. But I guess if you mm. smoke the the crap that comes from China, China. Uh, or you know you're growing it in crappy soil, you're gonna you're gonna get that. But if you're growing good good clean hemp like you get in kentucky or colorado uh, but under these new this new hemp law you're going to be able to do it in every state in the country put uh, it in a truck and move it i'm going to mail it to my sister over the counter <laughs> um this this moves this would move hemp from the csa removes it from the from the uh, controlled substances act no regulation except by the fda mm. So I'm going to mail it to my sister. You still got, you still got the FDA that's going to say, meh, it's not a uh, supplement or you can't say that. Of course, you can't say that about anything like that. But uh, so the FDA is still going to have control along with the agricultural department where you basically will be able to get crop insurance for your industrial, your hemp grow. And we're talking low THC 0.3 hemp that is, can be grown very good medicinal plants uh, across the country as soon as this bugger is signed by uh, the Donald who wants to be ha to be popular. <laughs> and have fun. And have fun at the same time. Have fun. So uh, he's all, I'm sure he'll sign it. Uh, he's going to sign the farm bill anyway because it'll it'll be a fine way of getting it done. And then, but then, but you know, I'm, I'm referring to Donald with regards to his campaign promises around medical marijuana. Um, and uh, recreational, leading it up to states. So that's why we play it. I don't play it because I love him. He, you know, he creates his own reality, and I gotta respect him at some level. <laughs> that's <laughs> but, respectable, but that's but, about all. Uh, but uh, and and the contrast that he introduces to the to the uh, to the manifestation uh, is a good thing. Because look at what it's developed. Look at all the contrast that's been thrown into the mix that's come out of uh, the Grand Cheeto. So, uh, you know, you find you make lemons out of oil, uh, orange aid out of oranges. Right. Um, so or Julius Caesar out of Julius orange, Julius Caesar. Um, but I digress. Let's uh, let's continue to talk about the fact that hemp is going to change America. Hemp hasn't been legal in this country for about the, about the same time. All the cannabis plant hasn't been legal and we've had to import it from everywhere. And we have been. So this is going to change. It's going to change a lot. Um, the Taxes aren't going to be an issue because it's going to be off the Controlled Substances Act. So it's not going to be regulated as far as that goes. So that's 2280E is not going to be a problem. So uh, this is it's uh, it's exciting and it's going to be a, it's going to be a big boom for a lot of these companies that are laying the groundwork. A lot of these companies like these hemp infused drink companies. There's a ton of them out there, a ton of them. Um, and, and then it, they're putting it in everything. They're putting CBD in everything. It's the new. CBD is the new avocado. Yeah. Or kale. Or no, that's, I guess, anyway, it's the new something. And it's, we all, you know, we all know it's kind of a fazool. You need the whole damn plant. Um, and, you know, if, if, if cannabis is ever going to kill anybody, it's going to be an isolate that does it. You know, not that it may oh, ever yeah. happen, but it's going to be something made in a lab. Something made by man, not the plant. Not the full flower. Absolutely, cosmic lead. It's about f in time. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, uh, what that does to all the all those cannabis stocks or all those hemp stocks, and how it's just going to uh, affect the economies in so many. I mean, so, I mean, it's a big investment, but a lot of companies have already started investing. Uh, Acreage Holding is they, you know, they they didn't make a whole lot of profit in their last statement because they're investing. Uh, so there's a lot of people investing in this cannabis in this in hemp. Because it is a big, you know, it's a big change. Uh, so it's going to be slow in a lot of states. But Kentucky, Vermont, 
Colorado, any of these states that already have active hemp programs. Ooh. Bing, 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 bing. Watch out. So Green Rush, good news. Free the plant, free the people. Well, at least we're freeing part of the plant. Now we just need to free the rest of it and make it like tomatoes. So you can grow it, uh, sell it at the farmer's market on Sunday and take the rest of it home or give it away uh, for whatever you need. That's what we really need to do. So that can happen. Nah, might get it rescheduled in 2019. Might get it rescheduled because medic of medical. Mm-hmm. That's sort of my inclination. Because of taxes. And because of taxes. Because of banking. Yeah. That's the real reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, research that that could all be taken care of with rescheduling. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably in our for in our in our for future, uh, especially as things get stickier with the Trump administration. Uh, and if the Dems, um, you know, Bernie's on board, as I said at the top of the headline hash in today's uh, in this week's headline hash, Bernie is in his new book. He's brought it out again, but it's you know, he's always been on board. Uh, but you know, I think he, you know, it is. We talked about it last week. It's cannabis twenty twenty. Joe Kennedy's on board. Michael Moore says, put it on the, put it on the ballots, put it on the ballot in Ohio, put recreational cannabis on the ballot in Ohio. You'll get a bunch of people to the polls. That's just the way it'll be. Uh So uh, let's move on to our next segment. Uh, Oh, that was our last segment. (laughs) And look what time it is, Chella. It's 530. Boom. We did it. One hour. Tight show, everybody. 